know why there was a request for toys. I thought they are just having a hard time. Right. It's really inspiring to see that you can go from an idea to really a plan in just three days. I think as scientists, we sometimes limit ourselves with a lot of questions and a lot of criticism. And now we allowed ourselves to dream. På EU Talent Dawn får unga forskare mellan 21 till 35 år verktygen för att ta forskningen från labbet till resten av samhället. Över 100 doktorander och studenter från 38 länder tävlade i Katowice i Polen. Sometimes we as scientists are not taught to think the impact beyond that brilliant idea that you're having from a lab perspective and from a research perspective. How do you communicate that idea? How to bring it to the market? Who would benefit from this financially? Because even if it's, it doesn't matter if it's health, soil, climate change, somebody has to benefit financially from every single idea. Even in research, even for a grant, there has to be a financial reward somehow. Det här var den andra upplagan av EU Talent On som är ett initiativ från EU-kommissionen. Deltagarna delades upp i olika lag och på drygt en vecka utvecklade de en produkt utifrån EUs uppdrag och presenterade den för en jury. Andrea Stefani deltog på den första tävlingen. Um, I got my bachelor's in biochemistry and I got a master's in molecular biotechnology. It was through Talent Zone that I got acquainted with the fact that lung cancer is a massive problem worldwide. It's a number one reason that people die of cancer in the entire planet and they are typically very difficult to diagnose. So what we came up with was trying to find ways to make it as simple as possible and everybody we know got tested for COVID. Why? Success factors, simple, easy, non-invasive, reliable, next to your house. What if we take all of those factors and apply it to lung cancer screening, lung cancer detection? And I told my team, I'm doing this. Whoever wants to come with me can come, but this is happening. Like, we're, we're going to give this a shot. And then literally, the event ended on a Sunday or Saturday, whatever. And then on Monday, I was already like fully booked with meetings, calling everybody I knew or didn't know, but whoever wanted to give out a helping hand to understand if there was a business case behind this, what the next steps were going to be and how we could make this a reality. March 2023, so like a few months later, we incorporated the company officially. Andrea Stefani was this time with the jury, and on the last day, they saw the winner. The charts will be counted by the representatives of the organizers and of the European Commission. Julia, will you do the honors of welcoming there? I thought it was quite nerve-wracking. So what they did is they had like five um, glass tubes and then jury members would put ping pong balls in and we could not see which tube was from which team. And then there was a draw. <laughs> we have a procedure for this, but we don't have an elegant procedure for this. Det stod mellan ett lag inom cancerprevention och ett lag inom jordmån. Förutom segmentet med pingisbollarna hade jurymedlemmarna gett poäng till de olika lagen ifall det skulle bli oavgjort. Uh, we all had to wait to, for the final decision. So those were I think the most nerve-wracking 10 seconds of my past 10 years. Men till slut vann Anneke Castellains lag Breath for Life. I felt really proud. Mostly really proud because I did it together with our team. And I, I saw the competition and everybody had such great ideas that I was also really grateful and humble that we, that we now get the opportunity to really move on with our idea. Precis som Andrea Stefani utvecklade de en produkt som ska kunna upptäcka lungcancer tidigare. For half of the patients they only have a 5% survival chance. So what we wanted to do was improve that and we thought of a way to um, make it really easy. So we designed a small device in which you can blow. Uh, when you have cancer your metabolism changes and it produces certain molecules. Now this device can detect those molecules. So you can get an instant uh, screening and because it's so small it's very easy to use for population-wide screenings. We designed it in a way that we think we can make it very affordable so that we can also bring it to rural areas, to areas where there is no cancer detection uh, at the moment. Um, so we can really make it available for everyone everywhere. 
What was it that drew you to this place and said, I want to go there? I think the chance to do something different with science. So um, I enjoy science. I think it's, it's really something special to be able to ask questions all day. We try to uh, figure out how something works, then we write it up. We try to uh, share this knowledge with the world. But I also wanted to experience how it would be to do something that has a bit more direct impact. I just wish there were more contests like this. So Talent Town happens every two years, which is awesome. It's a great event. I love it. I'm so happy to be here. But there really are very, very, very few science-focused hackathons. There are a million hackathons for engineers to develop softwares and whatnot. But there are very few that bring scientists together. Scientists have a lot to learn about entrepreneurship, but once they do, they can make really good entrepreneurs. This is like a call for any organization that wants to create more talent in their organization. It doesn't have to be a European Union founded and funded event. It can be in your local university, in your faculty of medicine and faculty of biology. Even the own students can organize it. I just wish I would see that entrepreneurial spirit more often in scientists, especially here in Europe.